Hey guys, it's Leah Mason Virgin, your Christian success coach, business coach, life coach, and author at BurstingWithBlessings.com. And today is Sunday. Happy Sunday, everyone. I'm really excited to be live with you guys today here in the community group, Blessed Christian Business Success and Life Coaching by Aaliyah. If you guys are on YouTube, we are starting this live in the Facebook community. And I am just excited to share with you guys about talking about intuition and talking about tapping into the Holy Spirit, trusting ourselves, um, cultivating that sensitivity, right? And one of the things I want to encourage you guys is to be prepared that this um, September I am launching Unpack Your Money Story. We are going to be unpacking our money story and we are going to be learning how God views debt, wealth, investing, you name it. We're going to unpack it. Um, but September 7th through the 11th, we're going to be really looking at where did we get our money story. Interestingly enough, um, how you view money um, is imprinted in you by the age of seven. Seven, ladies! Like your money story and everything that you are doing, if you have not already unpacked your money story, you are coming from a place of whatever was imprinted in you in this first seven years. So I'm really excited to um, get that going this September, but today we're going to be talking about intuition. We're going to be talking about um, Holy Spirit guidance and trusting ourselves. And we hear a lot of um, differing information in our culture. Hey, Cheryl, how are you? Um, we're going to be talking about a lot of what the culture, and I'm going to come from American Christian culture because that's the only thing I can talk about, ladies, is American Christian culture. And primarily the culture I grew up in um, was a Southern culture. So, mm, Right? Okay. So I'm going to talk about that and I'm going to talk about from my, you know, I had some privilege, absolutely, as a white female, but also in my culture, in Southern culture, I was not valued as a girl. Actually, my biological father said, why would I pay for your college? You're a girl. <laughs> and some of you are going, wait, what? <laughs> Yeah, I was born in 1977, and I was in high school in um, the mid-90s, and obviously I had a very strained um, relationship with my biological father, and I was not valued as a, um, as a woman, as a young lady, um, in his eyes. And so that was a very eye-opening experience for me, right? My childhood was a very broken childhood, and so the the message that I got was very much one of failure was not allowed, being wrong was not allowed, um, making mistakes was not allowed, um, all all the um, all the all the negatives that you can think of. I feel like was a message that I got, and you know I don't know about you guys, and please feel free to to you know share what you feel comfortable sharing about your you know what the message you received about trusting your intuition and about trusting your feelings. Um, for me, I remember very distinctly um, over and over and over again, I was told that, you know, that my, my mother used a lot of the terminology of, well, I know what you're thinking and I know why you're doing this, but you don't. And so that was a very um, destructive uh, thing to say to a teenager is that I didn't understand why I was doing things, that I didn't understand my feelings and that my feelings weren't valid, right? So that hurtful scar tissue has been something, um, hurtful message and, and, and wound became a scar and became my story for not trusting myself, not trusting my ability to, to hear God. And I hear that a lot from, from women is they say, you know, well, how do I know what God's telling me? How do I know which path to go? Um, how do I know that this is really what God wants for me? And, you know, that comes along with 
also people pleasing, right? We are raised, especially in American culture, as women to be hyper aware of other people's feelings and to make sure that we submit and stuff down our feelings to ensure that what another person feels and thinks is validated and given preferential treatment, right? And I don't believe that God has ever wanted that for any of us. God wants us to have eyes on Jesus, eyes on God, and eyes on speaking the truth in love, right? Speaking the truth in love. And the truth comes from A, knowing God's word, and B, healing ourselves. And knowing ourselves and knowing why we do things, why our natural inclinations are, let's say, to anger, right? Or to manipulation or to victimhood, right? I spent several decades, um, you know, feeling uh, victimized and marginalized, um, even even though I didn't even fully understand um, the privilege that I did have. I'm going to be very honest with you guys. It was an eye-opening experience to adopt a beautiful black daughter, a beautiful black baby, and, and have my eyes opened to privilege, right? So just because we have some privilege doesn't mean that there still isn't some evisceration of of our voice, right? But even more so in the black community, their voice is marginalized and eviscerated even further. But you guys know that's definitely one of my topics that I speak on, but we're going to bring back to generalizations, okay? I'm going to be general, so it's not, you know, I really want to, I really want to uphold that everybody's story is so personal, it's so individual, and it's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this today, you guys. Because God is the God of, of individuals. He is the God who sees us. The God who loves us individually, right? You know, in, in, in the Old Testament, she cried out and said, How am I alive that the God, the creator of the universe, has spoken to me, who sees me, right? Saw her, spoke to her, called to her. And she chose to listen and obey on one level. But then she didn't further unpack that relationship. So I want to take, I really want you guys to take the time to take a look at that um, with Sarah and, and, and Abraham and everything that happened there. Um, I want you guys to think about the fact that um, she didn't transform her relationship with the creator of the universe. And that happens to a lot of us where we will take a minute um, to recognize that God sees us and God is creating a miracle in our life and we're having this amazing encounter with God. But then we don't choose to go into a deep dynamic relationship with him now do I think that that's part of her culture and marginalization as a servant yes absolutely right right but that doesn't excuse our past doesn't excuse our future choices Right? My past, my pain, the things that I've gone through doesn't excuse me not finding healing. Right? Not choosing a deep, dynamic relationship with Jesus Christ. Right? The God of the universe, right? And so, when we choose to come into a deep dynamic relationship with Jesus Christ. We sensitize our soul and our mind to hear him. When we choose in the morning 
to take five, ten minutes to read his word, to speak his word. We start to put that healing medicine inside, which is the word of God. It's healing. Yeah? And sometimes healing is hard. Healing is painful, ladies. You know, hashtag real and raw. Always keep it raw up in here. Um, this healing journey for me hasn't been easy. It's been hard. One of the things that I wrote the other day that I really wanted to share with you guys. When you get humble, it was a thought. I was listening to this book, and, I, and this is what I heard. When you get humble and open to hearing the raw truth, God brings ideas, miracles, forgiveness, grace. Right? But we have to say, and you guys have often heard me pray, Lord, we submit ourselves for your transformation and change. Imprint your holy word upon our hearts and minds. And I've encouraged you guys to create a biblical vision board where you have scripture all around. Because the living word is living, active, and breathing. It's life-giving, it's empowerment. And we as women have di been disempowered for far too long. And that doesn't mean all of us. God has wanted us to be empowered. I mean, look at Shira. She built three cities back in Deuteronomy, maybe. She was mentioned, I think, in, no, in Exodus numbers. <laughs> she was mentioned as building three cities. If God didn't want her empowered to trust herself, trust her leadership skills, and trust being united with him, wouldn't have happened and it definitely wouldn't have been recorded in the word of God Queen Esther we are queens when we choose to imprint the word of God and learn it right Proverbs 19 8 to acquire good sense is to love oneself to treasure discernment is to prosper and discernment and trusting our intuition comes from a deep, dynamic relationship with Jesus Christ. It, it takes tearing down cultural constructs that say what we should think and feel. Right? What, was, what were you told that you should think and feel as a child? You have to unpack that. You have to look at that and look at it with a discerning eye and journal it out every morning and say, this is what I was told I'm supposed to think and feel and do and say? But my core heart is saying no. Why? I've struggled day by day for decades saying, what, is this right? I have to get it right. I have to get it right every day. No, we don't have to get it right every day. So what God said. The woman who wept at his feet, he didn't say to her, now go and get it right every day. No. He said, peace be with you. Go and sin no more. Trust in me. Trust in the word that I give you that your sins are forgiven. Right? I wrote down the other day, I trust my intention, intuition and my relationship with the Holy Spirit more and more each day as I tap more into my deep, dynamic relationship with the Holy Spirit. I open my mind and my eyes to see what God is teaching me and how to grow new perspectives, words, and habits to create the blessings and impact God wants. I passionately desire to shine and contribute 
healing and love into every relationship I encounter every day. What, what do you deeply desire? Because those deep desires are from God. They're from the Holy Spirit. And when you stuff those desires down and you don't look at them and you don't choose to plan them out, right? Oh, I had one on planning and now I lost it. I wrote it down and I lost where did I put it. Oh, wait. Wait, wait. Did I? Hold on, <laughs> Hold on you guys. Oh. Genesis eleven six. Now nothing which I purpose with God will be impossible. Right? I'm a doer, James 1, I'm a doer of the word. I am an effectual doer. I will be blessed in what I do. I am working with God to bridle my tongue. My religion is being walked out day by day and not the religion that you grew up with. God said, come, Jesus said, come follow me, learn from me. But we go to church and we show up and we say, tell me what I should think and feel and do. Are you giving your power away and, and people pleasing and finding your worth and your value in other people? I know I did for decades, decades, and I'm still fighting it. To stand up and be bold, courageous, confident. To speak in a way that isn't the way I was raised. Ladies. We have to tear down the old constructs. And we have to first put the word, the living word, into our minds. Not the word that somebody else gives you. It's great to have a pastor. It's great to have, have me as your Christian coach. I'm honored, honored to serve you. But none of us should have a higher valuation than Jesus' word and your relationship with him and your time unpacking the word with him in the morning and saying, what? What are you teaching me today, Jesus? What are you saying? And it doesn't take long. It hasn't, I mean, this book, I've been writing in this book for over a year. But I've been doing it just a little bit every morning, right? To get those words and that scripture and those affirmations and those thoughts and unpacking and grappling and going for a run. And I was talking to Jesus about what, what Paul wrote about suffering. And I said, Jesus, define to me. Give me the definition of what you define as suffering in accordance with your will and your word. Because I see in your word an abundance of blessings, protection, love, and I'm grappling with this today, Jesus. And he's not afraid when, when we come to him and say, I'm grappling, I'm grappling with my money mindset. I'm grappling with what suffering is. I'm grappling with what pick up your cross and follow me means. He's not afraid of that, ladies. We are. We've been told to be afraid of that. To not question at a level, at a dynamic, deep level. 35 minutes out there running with Jesus and talking to him and saying, Define this for me. A white woman in America as an individual My definition is different than a beautiful sister in Christ in Nigeria, Nigeria or, or Sri Lanka or wherever, China. This world is not fair. It is broken. It is sinful. But that doesn't mean that what is happening in the world trumps God's word. Does that make sense? Right? We have to think.
think on that. We still have to grapple with his word every day. And as we grapple with his word, we're uniting with him. We're being interwoven with what he's calling for us specifically. What he is teaching for you specifically to do, to create, to stand for, to to advocate for. What do I advocate for? It might not be the same as you. Maybe you're called to advocate for for the injustice of of I I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We are the body of Christ, individually created for a time such as this. So trust by doing, speaking, thinking, grappling, trying, sure, falling down. Though the righteous fall seven times, or in my case, seven to the 777th power, I shall yet rise again. Because he says that he is the perfecter and the author of my name. He says, I will, I personally will prosper. As my soul prospers in his word, you will prosper. As your soul prospers in the word every morning, you will start to trust your intuition. That Holy Spirit united because you are marked as Christ's own. It is said right here, the spiritual realm sees it. You are marked as holy unto the Lord. What that looks like, I don't know, but I think it's beautiful. We are individually marked and then woven into God's kingdom agenda. And I'm here for his kingdom agenda even when I'm scared even when I don't feel good enough even when I feel like why would you call me Lord I've had to heal so many things and I still have so much more to heal but I keep saying every morning I'm here for this I trust that I will learn and grow because I keep submitting to that deep dynamic relationship through your word, through prayer, and through grappling with questions and unpacking my past story and what others have said I should think and feel. And then standing counter to what the world says about me, about women, about God about Jesus when we keep standing counter to that and walking out our callings and our gifts and what God is telling us we should stand for you cultivate this deep dynamic intuition that's united united aligned with the Holy Spirit no one can tell you whether you're right or wrong Everything that you do should be looked at through the lens of God's word and what God is telling you inside of your heart and your spirit. A church can't tell me what's right or wrong. God's word, studying it, unpacking it, learning it. Sure, I've asked pastors lots of questions. I met this amazing messianic pastor on Instagram years back. Sent him a message one time asking him a question. I know that he doesn't believe that women should deliver the word, but that's okay. I can still learn from him. Right? I don't agree with him. Right? God has used women in amazing ways. And he will continue to. Right? And so I want each of us to choose that morning time, that individual time with God, 
And yeah, we're going to lose friends. We're going to lose followers. I'm okay with that. If this isn't the place for you, if I'm not the, the Christian coach for you, that's okay. Totally okay. It's totally okay. Right? We are individuals that God sees. He's the God who sees us. Deuteronomy 33, verse 3. Indeed, he loves the people. All your holy ones are in your hand, and they followed in your steps. Everyone receives of your words. Everyone. Everyone receives. Everyone. When we go boldly to the throne room of grace, with a heart to hear and to learn and to grow in God, and grow in knowledge of his word, you will sensitize your spirit to hear. You will cleave closer and more and more to trusting that deep, beautiful, dynamic relationship that tells you exactly what you are to say and to do in love and bold courage, whether or not people want to hear it or not, whether or not they end up having to, maybe you have to put them in time out maybe they can't ever be a friend again we have to be okay with that to trust our intuition means that we will have positive and negative consequences the positive consequences of being a bold light for Jesus Christ maybe a negative consequence of having to lose a friendship had all of those and continue to have those I'm sure right if we're doing things God's way if we're really trusting our intuition and doing things God's way it isn't going to look like the world's way and it is going to come with huge blessings and some worldly hurts for sure I believe that. I believe that. But God says that we will be blessed in all we do when we plan with Him. And the way to plan with Him is to know His Word. Is to start trusting the big, bold dreams that He is giving you. Unpacking your past, healing it, speaking the Word of God writing it, praying it, and becoming all that he has for you. He has marked out your race. Your race is yours and yours alone. Your inheritance is yours and yours alone. And as you run the race, the high calling in Christ Jesus, you will reap a hundredfold harvest of blessings in this life and the life to come. According to his word and I stand on that. Amen? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we humbly come before you with praise and thanksgiving. We thank you, Jesus, that we can come into a deep, dynamic relationship with Abba Father because you sacrificed yourself for us and have given us the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for overflowing in our hearts and hearts. Lord Jesus, please lead us to the scripture that we need to speak, believe, and be. Please imprint your holy word upon our hearts and minds. Please keep us planted in your streams of living water, bearing fruit in season, our leaf never to wither, and the, the schemes of the adversary to be broken, vanquished, the enemy flung in seven different directions away from us as we boldly walk out our gifts and calling according to your word and your will and your way. Help us, Jesus, to keep our eyes fixed on you. You are the author, creator of the plans that you have for us, plans to prosper us and give us a hope and a future to keep us as part of your body to create your kingdom agenda 
to go forth and be a bright and shining light on a hill that no one can say that they didn't see, that they weren't transformed by our light, the light of Christ that just beams out of us. A thousand million watt star are we for you, Lord Jesus. We submit ourselves for your transformation and change. Show us, Lord, the uncomfortable truths that we must unpack. Show us the hurts that we must put your healing balm into us. Anoint us into our calling and our gifts in such a way that we are bold, courageous. We speak, we act, and are in such a way that people say there's something different about her something different beautiful impactful amazing because we are conquerors in christ jesus we are victors we have the aroma of christ the aroma of life love grace peace and transformation in jesus christ Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for calling us. Yes, we are unworthy of the high calling. But we say, I am here. We say, I send me, Lord, send me. Make me your spokeswoman so that all will turn to you and come into a deep, dynamic relationship with you, Lord Jesus. Protect us and prosper us and bless us in all respects. And we thank you and we sing praises to your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, friends, for joining me today. It is my absolute honor to encourage you into your purpose and your mission. May you never veer from it. May when you fall, you rise more empowered and more determined to persevere with stamina and courage in Christ Jesus. And if I may pray for you, please reach out and message me. May Jesus infuse you with his treasures and glory, Ephesians 3.16. May he give you confidence, courage, blessings, and protection to do all that you are called to do and all that he has marked out for you to do. And if I may link arms with you and help you, I encourage you to reach out and message me. My programs are here for you, and I would be honored to be your coach. And I'll see you guys in the daily devotion.